Maria, a spirited and compassionate 48-year-old woman, dedicated her life to her family and career. As a loving mother to two young, energetic children aged 9 and 12, she was always actively involved in their lives, attending their soccer games, helping with school projects, and making sure they felt supported and cherished. As a teacher, she loved helping her students discover their passion and reach their full potential, achieving more than they had thought they were capable of. However, in the past six months, Maria's life took an unexpected turn. She has been experiencing rapidly progressive cognitive decline, memory loss, unsteady gait, difficulty with speech and visual disturbances. These symptoms have not only impacted her ability to function as a mother, but meant she had to give up her work as a teacher. Maria's symptoms began six months prior, initially manifesting as mild forgetfulness and difficulty concentrating. She also noticed occasional episodes of blurred vision and difficulty finding the right words during conversations. Over the following two months, her condition worsened and she developed more prominent memory lapses, impaired judgment and personality changes. Her family observed a decline in her ability to perform routine tasks and an increasing tendency to become disoriented. This was thought to be possible depression and she consulted her family practitioner who prescribed SSRI antidepressants as treatment. Approximately four months after the onset of her symptoms, Maria's motor function began to deteriorate. She experienced increasing difficulties with balance and coordination, leading to frequent falls. Her speech became slurred and less coherent, and her visual disturbances progressed to more severe visual hallucinations. She also developed muscle stiffness and jerking movements, known as myoclonus. Maria's family became increasingly concerned about her rapid decline and sought medical attention. By the time she presented to the clinic, her cognitive and motor functions were severely compromised and her ability to communicate effectively was limited. Maria had no previous history of psychiatric illness or substance abuse. Maria's medical history was unremarkable, with no significant medical or surgical events. She was married with two children and worked as a teacher. She had no history of high-risk behaviours or exposure to environmental toxins. There was no family history of neurological disorders, suggesting that Maria's case was sporadic rather than a genetic illness. Maria was described as a responsible, hard-working and sociable individual with a strong support network of family and friends. Maria had no history of involvement with the criminal justice system. Routine blood tests were performed to assess Maria's overall health and to rule out other possible causes of her symptoms. The complete blood count, including hemoglobin, white blood cell count and platelet count was within normal limits. Her liver function tests, including alanine aminotransferase and aspartate aminotransferase, alkaline phosphatase and bilirubin were also normal. Kidney function tests, including blood, urea, nitrogen and creatinine, were unremarkable. Additionally, her electrolyte panel, including sodium, potassium, calcium and magnesium levels, was within normal ranges. These findings suggested that Maria's symptoms were not the result of an underlying systemic illness. Magnetic resonance imaging of Maria's brain was conducted to visualize any structural abnormalities or lesions that could explain her symptoms. The MRI revealed hyperintense signals in the cortical and subcortical regions, predominantly in the basal ganglia and thalamus, on T2-weighted and fluid-attenuated inversion recovery flare sequences. These findings, known as high-signal abnormalities, are considered characteristic of CJD, although they can also be seen in other neurodegenerative conditions. There was no evidence of brain atrophy, tumours or vascular abnormalities such as infarcts or hemorrhages. The radiological findings were consistent with the diagnosis of CJD. A comprehensive neurological assessment was performed to evaluate Maria's cognitive, motor and sensory functions. Electroencephalography, EEG, was conducted to assess Maria's brain activity. 
the results revealed periodic sharp wave complexes, which are characteristic findings in CJD. These complexes are triphasic or biphasic sharp waves that occur periodically every one to two seconds. Cerebrospinal fluid analysis. A lumbar puncture was performed to collect a sample of Maria's CSF. Analysis of the CSF demonstrated the presence of 1433 proteins, which are considered a supportive biomarker for CJD when clinical and radiological findings are consistent with the diagnosis. The CSF protein and glucose levels were within normal limits and there was no evidence of infection or inflammation. Maria underwent a battery of neuropsychological tests to assess her cognitive functions. Her performance on the mini mental state examination, the MMSE, was significantly impaired with a score of 12 out of 30. She exhibited deficits in attention, memory, language, and visual spatial abilities. On the trail making test, Maria demonstrated difficulty with both visual scanning and cognitive flexibility as she was unable to complete the task within the allotted time. The Ray Auditory Verbal Learning Test revealed severe impairments in both immediate and delayed recall of verbal information. During the physical examination, Maria exhibited several signs of neurological dysfunction. Firstly, cerebellar ataxia. Maria displayed unsteady gait, impaired balance, and difficulty with coordination. When asked to perform a heel-to-shin test and finger-to-nose test, she demonstrated dysmetria, which is the inability to accurately judge the distance and range of movements. Secondly, myoclonus. Maria experienced involuntary jerking movements, predominantly affecting her upper limbs. These movements were stimulus-sensitive and increased in frequency when she was startled or attempted to perform voluntary movements. Thirdly, rigidity. Maria exhibited increased muscle tone and resistance to passive movement, particularly in her upper limbs. This rigidity contributed to her difficulties with motor function and coordination. Visual disturbances. Maria reported blurred vision and visual hallucinations, which were corroborated by her family members. Ophthalmological examination revealed no structural abnormalities in her eyes. Cognitive and memory impairments. Maria's cognitive and memory functions were severely compromised, as evidenced by her poor performance on neuropsychological tests and her inability to recall important personal information. There is currently no cure for CJD and the treatment is mainly supportive. Maria received palliative care, including medications to control her myoclonus and physical and occupational therapy to help manage her mobility and daily activities. Unfortunately, Maria's condition deteriorated rapidly and she passed away eight months after the onset of her symptoms. Maria's case highlights the importance of early recognition and accurate diagnosis of Creutzfeldt-Jakob disease. Although there is no cure for this fatal disorder, appropriate supportive care can help improve the quality of life for patients and their families during the course of the disease, and we must continue to invest in research to improve our understanding of this disease and help create successful therapies. We have provided links to the CJD foundations in the US and the UK for those affected by this illness. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to like and subscribe and hit the bell icon so you'll be informed of our future releases. I'm including two links on the end screen. The one on the left is to the next clinical case you might find interesting, while the one on the right links to a playlist of psychiatric interviews I've analyzed to demonstrate and comment on psychopathology. As always, take care of yourselves and each other.